What is going on, guys? Welcome back. Commentary for you. Ryan Moody, Jimmy Smith. Again, I've heard other podcasts say, Jimmy, that somehow they are more hygienic, but until there is another one that can clear as many states as we do, I will decree we are the most safest podcast on the internet, period. And when news breaks, we cover it. News kind of just broke. Now, before we came on, I mentioned to you about Cage Warriors. Uh, I did not watch it. You did not watch it. I had mixed feelings about it going on. Cue the comment section telling us we're just giant cotton balls. But I just felt like it wasn't the right thing to do. I, I get it. You know, a couple weeks ago when the UFC went, it was in the face of adversity. But now there's a known threat. There, there's a true danger. And... I feel like people are doing it just to say they continue to do it, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel the same way about it. I didn't have to watch it, so I didn't. Um, to be perfectly honest, if if and we'll discuss this in a minute, if they somehow put on uh, Khabib Ferguson, I, I don't have a choice as as an MMA commentator, however you want to put it. I, mean, I do a radio show that, that's that's still going on. Um, I, I have to watch it. I really do. I don't want to support something that is going to might be detrimental to people's health. And I think this is one of those things that, 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 that might be there. This isn't one of those, you know, a couple of weeks ago when, when the UFC did their show in Brazil, it was just starting out. We weren't really sure how bad it was or how bad it was going to get. We know now. We know now how bad it can potentially get and how bad it is. And so it's one of those things where we all need to slow down and take a step back. And and you don't want to kind of reward um, people that aren't taking the proper steps. And I got the feeling that was the case with this show. And I didn't have to watch it, so I didn't. So the first thing I'll say, and you made a lot of good points there about, you know, wanting to watch it and then needing to watch it. We're We're kind of in a different realm here. I will say that I am encouraged by the fact that Dana has came out and openly stated that only the people that want to be involved are going to be involved. He is not obviously making out a commitment to people where they have to go, where you would assume their job is at risk. Having said that, you could also make the assumption that if someone has a job to do in the UFC, there would be a natural pressure, as any of us would have, to perform their job's tasks in a situation that calls for them. So while someone may not be totally comfortable in doing this, they may have to do it. So I will say at least that's been addressed. A lot of this is still very fluid, very up in the air. Uh, he has came out and said there is a new location. He has not told what the location is. He has stated it will be behind closed doors and that basically... He's not going to say anything until uh, apparently it's time to say it. He has been very firm in this fight happening. Even when the other events got canceled, we drew the line at this one. It seemed like he was just determined. Uh, I, I don't want to say unhealthily, but, but it seems like he has really made it a point that he will personally make sure this fight is done. And I just don't know if that's going to give us the best result because... You can't have it both ways. You can't say everyone's going to be here of their own free will and then have the owner or, you know, whatever position you want to say he has there, the face of the UFC, basically almost in a, uh, I mean, I don't want to, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, it's not egotistical. It, it, it's almost just like he is so defiant about this. Monomaniacal. Right. It's the one thing he's focused on. And it's the dark side of success. It's the dark side of drive, right? When someone is, this is going to happen, hell or high water, I'm going to make it. Every now and then, not every now and then, quite often, you get brilliance and you get milestones. You get things you wouldn't get normally because of that attitude. But every now and then, you run headfirst into reality. And you get something like the Titanic. You get a disaster because of that. This is where we're going to see where that goes. 
because, yeah, he's completely focused on this fight happening because it's been delayed so many times. It's been canceled so many times. It's almost like this one has to happen. But the only option in terms of places that makes any sense is Russia. It's the only one that makes any sense to me. The people I know that are closer to this situation than I am, that's what they're saying, that it's probably going to be in Russia. It's the, the only thing that's completely safe is to not have the fight. That's it. Because even if Russia agrees to host it, Russia has not had many cases. It could be because Russia is not reporting very many cases. I've read articles that have said it doesn't make a lot of statistical sense considering Russia's – the size of Russia's border with China, that it has as few cases as it has. They did cut down travel very early, but it could just be underreported. Now, the idea that just the fighters, just the minimal crew necessary, uh, you have the commentators. What a lot of people realized, hopefully, if you saw the Brazil show, the number of people around the octagon that are production people, everybody there was a production person. And you could see, because there wasn't any crowd, how many people that is. It's a lot. It's a lot. And no matter where you do this, no place is safe. These fighters have to train. They have to have sparring partners. They have to somehow get ready. They can't get ready by themselves. And if they do, you'll see a, a much worse version of that fighter. You know, everybody talks about Tony Ferguson out there today on Instagram. He had someone where he's lifting truck tires. He's not doing that alone. He's not training by himself. He has to roll with somebody. He has to be around coaches. So it's a dangerous process. And then they have to get on a plane. They have to fly to wherever this is. They have to travel. Um, and as far as I know, they're not testing anybody. So that combination, as safe as you could try to make this event, wherever you want to make it, you can only make it so safe. And that's what I mean about determination running up against reality. We're going to do this full speed ahead. And okay, but, you know, he said our sport's different. Your athletes aren't any different. They're not superhuman. They can get this virus just like anyone else. They can get this disease just like anyone else. They are not exceptional in that way. The contact fighters come into is closer than any other sport, period, end of sentence. So it's, you know, no one's invulnerable. You can make it safer. You can't make it safe. If that's good enough for you to sleep at night as fans and as media and as an organization, fine. But don't have any illusions. You can't make it totally safe. And it's all fun and games until someone gets this thing. Two points with what you made. The first point is when it comes to a guarantee, as you mentioned, he cannot promise. No. He can only hope. He, he guarantees uh, I, this is going to be safe. No, you're, you're promising. You're, you are making your commitment that this is going to be safe, and you really don't have all that control. Whether the people that want to be there want to be there out of their own, I just want to do this, or you're making them as their employer, and they feel compelled to help you put on an event. The second part of it is, well, I guess to that point, it seems like he's he's taking a fight and making it very personal, almost defiant to everyone else. I will do this. That That is a concern to me, because are you doing it because it's the best for your fighters and your fans? Or are you doing it just to, to fly in the face of everything else and say, hey, you told me I couldn't do this, which, listen, to be fair, the UFC's fought that uphill battle its entire life. It's going to continue to fight that battle with certain people till the day they die. So for him to continue to kind of push that narrative, we're going to go against status quo and we're going to show you that we are the new normal. I don't think I like it being personal. But number two, the last nine minutes, Jimmy, our context of this fight is vastly different than it was three months ago, four months ago, six months ago when we spoke so glowingly about it. And it's not that I'm not looking forward to this fight. I certainly am. I've wanted this fight to happen for nearly five years. I remember we've talked in prior podcasts. I remember where I was the last time it got canceled. I was sitting at a stoplight. I heard it. I couldn't believe it. And then lo and behold, here we are. And I'm almost finding myself in the, in the, in the weirdest switch of positions where a fight that I thought I would always want to see. I'm now almost saying like, you know what? I, I don't want to see it. I, I don't want it to happen because I know that I'm going to get a shell of what it should have been. And that's a real problem for me. Mm. 
I agree. Um, I was talking to Anthony Smith today. We're doing MMA tonight this week. We're doing it from home, by the way. Um, it's a, it's a shortened show. It's only gonna be an hour, but but we're doing it from uh our homes. Anyway, we had a test today, and you know him and I were just you know talking about stuff, and we talked about it wasn't a coincidence. We had nine fights go to decision in Brazil. I think those fighters were flat. I think they had a lot on their minds. I think they didn't have whole camps. They had a lot of concerns, um, a lot of headaches, blah, 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 blah. A lot of fighters on that card in Brazil, and you and I talked about this in the post-fight breakdown, seemed flat. Now, can you imagine walking into the biggest fight of your life, um, and you've been training in a SEAL gym? Maybe you're sanitizing everything before and after you, you roll. Uh, you have one or two partners, maybe. A couple of sparring partners, a couple of guys to roll with, maybe a strength and conditioning coach. You 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 are trying to compete without any of the resources or very few of the resources you're used to having. How many people can afford this pay per view? I'm, I wouldn't buy it if I didn't have a job. If I didn't have to, if it weren't you know part of my living, and I was doing the post fight show, which I probably would be, I couldn't afford this pay per view. It's it's just it's. Every now and then, something's come out like a like a nine eleven that just makes that shifts your priorities, that shifts how you see the world. So both of those things are at play to me. The first one being these fighters just can't prepare like they normally would. Okay, gyms aren't a lot of them aren't functioning at all. Khabib trains in uh, San Jose, which is one of the hardest hit areas and one of the hardest hit states. Okay, so he's got a lot on his mind right now, and. He doesn't have the preparation. And also, there's the mental side of it where, you know, we're all clamoring for this fight because we kind of want things back to normal, but things aren't normal. They're just not. They're not going to be for a while. And so just mentally, everybody's going to be in a different space than, than they, they, like you said, than they were the last time this thing got, got canceled. So, so many things have changed. I just don't know if we're going to get the fight we deserve and the fighters deserve. That's important. Let's say what seems to be an improbability, the fight happens. Do you feel like this is a fight automatically setting itself up for a rematch? Because no matter what happens, we will have some way of feeling shorted or feeling like we need to see this on, I guess, let me just say a larger scale. I know that sounds cliche, but to be fair, even if it is the only live sporting event that weekend, it, it will inherently be missing something. If we don't get a full fight card, if we just get those two, because these are things that I really thought was ironically absent in the release of, hey, we're going to have a full fight card. It was, hey, no, we're going to have this fight. We're going to have these two. Now, now, granted, I don't think that totally means it's just going to be the one fight, but I would be really shocked if every single person on that card, top to bottom, was sent wherever they need to be sent to, whether it's Russia, Abu Dhabi, wherever, and B, totally needed. I mean, the less, when we talk about risk evaluation, we do know one thing, the less people, the less risk. So are you really going to throw out a full prelim? Are you really going to full out a, a complete card? I doubt it. You, you'll probably just, I would think, want to run your, your five main fights. So that's the other interesting thing we talked about before a couple shows back. The financial ramification of a society that is all across the world struggling. Every market is down. Everyone has concerns about their job and their position. Is now really the time for what, for many of us, is discretionary income to say, you know what, I'm going to drop that $60, $70. That's why I eventually said, you know, maybe this would be a good time to offer the fight for free. And a lot of people balked at that. A lot of, why would they do that? They, they were going to make so much money. They'll make so much money on pay-per-view. You know, the the same reason you have other companies that open up their shows for free, the same reason, you know, New Lion uh, went and released NFL Game Pass for free, because it builds fans. It, it shows people that the company is compassionate toward what's going on and cares about their fan base. And that doesn't just mean they have to give things away for free, but it does mean it gives them an opportunity to expose people to something they may not otherwise be able to afford. And this is certainly one of those luxuries. You and I have sat here for the better part of a year 
in a week it'll be a year, and probably spent easily sixty to a hundred dollars a month, if not twice, some months, buying boxing, buying fights, paying for subscriptions to see fights, and we don't think anything of it. I, that's kind of something we've always taken for granted that it's something that we'll do. But I totally respect the regular person that's not willing to do it. And I feel like this is going to be one of those major, major tests of where a lot of people are going to draw the line and say, hey, I, I'm not going to do it this time. Yeah, they can't. They can't. It's, it's not a matter of want to. It's not a matter of I prefer or this, this and that. A lot of people are just in a financial situation where they can't do it. They can't. And that's where that, you know, run into reality starts. Where, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. You can't. We're going to fly people out of this. If the airport shut down, you can't do it. Can't do it. And so, you know, th there are certain walls that just, they aren't optional. And for a lot of people, paying for a pay-per-view right now is not an option. They'd love to get back to normal. They'd love to have a break. But things aren't normal. It's just, it is what it is. So it's going to be interesting to see if, if even having this fight makes financial sense, especially considering the risks involved. All right, guys. Well, listen, I know for the we've sounded a little bit down, but here, here's the actual brass tacks of the whole situation. I know we all want to get back to normal. Jimmy, me, everybody. Okay, the fastest way we can get back to normal is to deal with a temporary inconvenience. Stay home. Wash your hands. Limit contact with as many people as possible. I know it seems insane, but I can tell you, and I'm sure Jimmy can tell you too, I've seen people that, I guess the best way I could qualify it, are treating this like a snow day. Oh, things are closed, we'll still walk, go out and have fun. Please, do not be that person. All you're doing is elongating the abnormal by doing that person. Now, people like myself that have a regular job where I'm actually essential personnel, I have to go do my job, that's one thing. But if you don't have to go out, stay at home. We've got a whole podcast full of shows, relive shows. Me and Jimmy are going to do more of the, the post-fight companions that you guys like so much. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family. And know that sooner or later, we are going to see the end of this. But the only way we're going to see the end of it sooner is if we do what we have to do. And right now, it's a responsibility we all have to protect everyone in our country, young, old, no matter how at risk they are. And it starts with watching your actions, being responsible for your actions and knowing they impact others. So please, even if you don't have ordinances in your town, even if you don't have restrictions in your town, me and Jimmy are going to give you some restrictions. Take care of yourself, clean yourself, and don't put people at risk unnecessarily. With that said, we appreciate you guys checking this out, and we will be back very shortly with more comments. 